from your notes. Um, page 28 and 30 through 32, we talk about the law of sines and the law of cosines. We've already gone over the law of sines. And so here, we're, um, I want to make sure you saw some of the harder word problems that you would have trouble getting as e easily by yourself. So first one here, example one, make sure you find this in your notes. The course for a boat race starts at point A and proceeds in the direction of 52 degrees west of due south. Now this is a different type of bearing for us. Before I told you that whenever you have just a degree written, we assume that we are going east of north. But when they put in directions like this, the second direction is telling you west or east, the first direction, north or south. This is the axis you will draw, and west is the direction that you will go from there. So we are going to start with a southern axis from point A, where we used to start with the northern axis, and make sure we go to the left or west of that 52 degrees. So just make sure it's an acute angle, approximately 52 degrees. And then we start moving, going towards B. And then when you get to point B, it says the direction changes east of south, 40 degrees east of south going to point C. So here's point B. From that direction we were going, if we put in another southern axis, we want to go 40 degrees towards the east or to the, towards the right. And we're moving towards C. Now notice up here it says C lies 8 kilometers directly south of point A. So we're going to end up due south of point A. So there's our point C. So we have this triangle. Notice it is not a right triangle. So using law of sines and law of cosines, we don't need right triangles anymore. So it also goes on to say that this is 8 kilometers from B to C. Oh, I'm sorry, from A to B, D south. A to C, 8 kilometers. We're supposed to find approximate the total distance of the race course. So we're supposed to find the distance all the way around. So little c, the side, is across from big C, the angle. And little a, the side, is across from big A, the angle. So how do we know whether or not we can use law of sines? Well, that depends on if we have, if we have an angle and its opposite side, which we don't seem to have yet. So what other angle might we be able to find? Well, if this is 40 degrees, and here I can see these lines are parallel, these southern north-south axis are parallel, so if this is 52, this angle up here is 52 because of alternate interior, there's our Z. And so I can easily find this angle inside the triangle by subtracting, this is angle B, would be 180 minus the 52 degrees and the 40 degrees. So angle B would come up to be 88 degrees. So now we can see we have an angle and its opposite side and an angle and the side that we want. So we can use law of sines. Whenever I do law of sines, I start with what I'm looking for on top. A over the sine of A, which would be the sine of 52, equals B, which is 8 kilometers, over the sine of B, which is the sine of 88. If we bring that sine of 52 over, A will equal A times the sine of 52 over the sine of 88. And if I put that in my calculator, I believe I'll end up with 6.31 kilometers. Okay, so that's not our answer, but that's the first thing we're going to need 
to find the distance all the way around the race course. So now we need to find little c. We're to find little c still using law signs. We're going to have to have angle c, the angle across from it. And of course there's 180 degrees in a triangle, so angle c is going to be 180 minus the 88 minus the 52, which will be 40 degrees. And that's nice. Okay, so to find little c, I always start with what I'm looking for on top, little c over the sine of c, the sine of 40, equals, and I could use a or b, it would be better to use b, because it was the, the sine that was given to me, 8 over the sine of 88. So C is going to equal 8 times the sine of 40 over the sine of 88. Punch that in my calculator and I get 5.15 kilometers rounded. So I'm looking for the total distance around the race course. The distance is going to equal the 8 kilometers plus the 6.31 plus the 5.15, which should come out to be 19.46 kilometers. There we go, all the way around the race course using law signs. Okay, second example here. Angle of elevation to an airplane from two points A and B on level ground. Okay, the first time I did this I didn't read all of it before I started drawing and didn't notice at the end it says the airplane is to the east of points A and B. Alright, so I need my airplane to be up here to the east. Here's my airplane. <laughs> Some wings of point A and B, and um, they are point A has an angle of elevation of 51 and B of 68. So, we've talked before about how if you're looking at two angle of elevations, the point that is further from the plane, of course, is going to have a smaller angle there if you look at those angles of elevation. So the smaller angle is 51, so this must be A, and the other angle is 68, so that is B. It says here A and B are two and a half miles apart, so this is two and a half miles, and we are looking for the altitude of the airplane. So how high up is the airplane? Now we know altitude of an airplane is usually in feet. And so if we want to, at the end of the problem, we can change it to feet, or we can change to feet right now as we go. I say we wait till the end of the problem so we don't have to look at these larger numbers as we go. So this is, of course, 112 degrees, because we've got a linear pair there adding up to 180. And we want to first find this altitude. I'm going to just call that x, so not to confuse it with a and b. Now, before, we did problems similar to this before with right triangles, and we had to do maybe two tangent problems and put them together using elimination or substitution, which was a little bit of a mess, and I told you there was going to be an easier way. Well, here it is. I noticed that if I use law of sines, um, I know here I can find this angle just by subtracting from 180, so I have an angle and its opposite side, and I could use this angle A and its opposite side, little a, to find that distance, and then I have a right triangle, and I can u easily use a trig function, regular sine, cosine, or tangent, to find x, and since 68 gives x is opposite over hypotenuse, it looks like we'll use sine. So let's start off with law of sines. If I try to find up here angle C, meaning this angle. Angle C would be 180 minus 51 and 112. So angle C comes up to be 
17 degrees. So there's 17. And so now we want to use our law of sines. And I'm looking for little a, so like I said, always start with what you're looking for on top. If it's an angle, you would start with the sine of a on top. But a over the sine of 51 equals c, which is 2.5, over the sine of c, 17. So a will be 2.5 times the sine of 51 over the sine of 17. And punching that into the calculator, looks like I end up with 6.65 miles. So that's a 6.65. Okay, so like I said, now don't feel like you have to use law of sines when you have a right triangle. Don't forget old Oscar and his apples. We can always go back to that, and that will be much simpler than using a law of sines or cosines. So here we got know that the sine of 68 equals opposite x over hypotenuse 6.65. So x equals 6.65 times the sine of 68. And we punch that in our calculator. And I come out with the altitude is 6.17 miles. So how many miles? How many feet are in a mile? Hmm, you should know that. 5,280, so if we want to change it to feet, we would multiply it, and that gives me 32,555.3 feet for my altitude. There we go.